Shalom, everybody, and I hope we are all getting back up from this big shock that has taken the world, and that we're working to be positive and besimcha, because that's the only way to get up and continue, and whatever happened, ultimately, ultimately, like we said in the big picture, we said this before, in the in, in perspective of the final redemption, all of this is good. Right now, we're in pain, people lo losing families, losing children, and, and, and destruction. But we have to connect our perspective to the ultimate end, where everything will be worked out. All those who were killed, all those who died will be resurrected. So if that's the case, why are we crying? If we're crying because we don't believe it in that much, then we have what to cry about, yes. But emuna, one of the fundamentals of emuna is in the Biat HaMashiach and in the, and the resurrection of the dead. That's a major fundamental part of Judaism, okay? So in light of all this, as we see the world, and people are waking up, people are not waking up, but still, even after many people waking up, we are still faced with this scary reality that the majority of Jewish people in the world are not at all observant. They're not following Torah laws. Again, willingly, un unwillingly, but people are not connected and they're transgressing, whether they know it or they don't know it, they're transgressing the Torah. There are many prohibitions of the Torah where the punishment is called karet. Karet translates as excision. It can mean a few things, to be cut off. It can mean a few things. Number one, that a person lives a full life in this world but that he's cut off from his world to come. That's scary. That he's in this world, he does, he does certain things, certain transgressions that give him the punishment of karet, cutting off, and it could that he loses his, he loses this, his world to come. Another type of karet, as where a person, his life in this world is cut short. He dies before the age of 60. Another type of karet is that a person may live a normal life, but he loses his children. So there's no continuation of him. These are all in the category of karet. There's details, there's many details in the Rambam and other books of laws on what, what configurates into karet. And also the specific sins, transgressions that give a person the liable penalty of karet. And many of them, many Jews today are transgressing, whether knowingly or knowingly. The point is that we want to bring up is that the Jewish people in the world are for the first time ever in the history of our long history of several thousand years. We're in this dilemma, in this situation where the majority of Jews in the world are not observant. A hundred years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, a hundred years ago, it's really shaky already. 200 years ago, still beginning to be shaky, but let's to be safe 300 years ago and backwards the majority of Jews all over the world were observant in Europe, in Asia, in North Africa, wherever Jews were, they held on to the Torah. That's how they kept on to, to exist. There was no assimilation because they were holding on to the Torah. It's only these two past 200 years, 250 years, the beginning of Reform Judaism, the Haskala Enlightened Movement, that Jews have been lost and many generations have been destroyed because of assimilation and totally lost. And also how people are actually lost. They don't know from their right to their left. People are literally, to say stupid, what can you do? With, is, that, is that the best word? I don't know. But people, the majority of Jewish people in the world are lost. They don't open their eyes. The Jew who sees with emuna, he sees so clearly the purpose of life. It's so clear. They put you in the earth. Then what? An atheist. Oh, that it ends there? And what if you're wrong? Oh, 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 what if you're wrong? Okay, what if you're wrong? You're in for it. It's 50. The atheists, he may be right, he may be wrong. As a Jew, we believe that there is an afterlife, that, that that's when life begins. By a Jew, life begins when they bury him. So that's our, all this world is a pros door, as a pr preparation stage for them. So we know there's punishment and reward and there's an afterlife and everything. So we're doing our best. But now the guys who don't have anything, the Jews, for example, are atheists. They're, they're literally stupid. You're wasting your life. Because what if you're wrong? <laughs> what if according to your hypothesis and your svara, your way of thinking, you're wrong? You're in for it. You're in for it. 
I know somebody, a young teenager who, who grew up religious and, 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 and grew up religious and he fell off. He fell off because uh, whatever, he's 23 years old and he talks to me about what he's going to do and this and that. I said, okay, fine and dandy. You know, there comes to an end to everything. Then what? Then what? Okay, you're in the grave. What are you going to do then? And he said, I don't want to think about it. What do you mean you want to think about it? I, I, I didn't say to him. He has to, he has to realize on himself. It's stupid to say that you don't want to think about it. You're fooling only one person. Rabbi Nachman says that a person in this world fools only one person, and that is himself. Okay? So the thing is, people are lost. People are stupid. That they don't think of the ultimate purpose. Rabbi Nachman teaches, Rabbi Nosan explains this, that if a Jew had what's called Yishuv Hadat, a clear, tranquil, calm mind, he would see clearly the ultimate purpose of life. It would be so, so clear. Okay? So people are lacking this Yishuv Hadat, this, this calming, cal calming of the mind. But the, the point is, if you had a calm mind, people would see clearly. People don't. So people are stupid, people are not calm, they're not focusing on the ultimate purpose. And because of that, many Jews, the majority of the Jewish people, how many are we in the world now? 15 million, 16 million. Of them, how many are religious, are following the Torah? A very minority, okay? The majority are not. The majority of Jews don't know what Shema Israel is, don't know what family purity is. That means they're having relations with a woman who's Nida. And that's also a libel penalty of Karet, for example. Shabbos transgressions, also Karet. There's many transgressions, correct? What is the hope for the Jewish people now? We're in such a situation where it's like the, it's, the Torah doesn't talk to them. Sexual transgressions, everything. It's part of normal life for them to, to not be observant, which means they're in the realm of sinning. So what to do? You know, what's the hope for such people? Let's give a perspective of our exile. As, we, as is known, there are, there were what's called the four exiles. Egypt, right? I'm trying to remember it. Mitzrayim, um, Bavel, Madai, that's one. Yavan and Edom. Egypt, Persia, Media, the Greeks, and the Romans. Egyptian exile was before the Jews entered the Holy Land, the time of Moses, Okay. The Babylonian exile, Nebuchadnezzar, was at the destruction of the first temple, 70 years. It was Persian media. There's two, two, two nations together. It's called it's called Babel, uh, Paras, Madai, whatever. Then you have the Yavanim, the Greeks, which is at the beginning of the second temple. Okay? And then you have the Romans, who are towards the end of the se second temple, destroying it. And we are presently in now the fourth exile of Edom until Mashiach comes. So there's four exiles, okay? The four exiles have a parallel in the Torah, which means there are levels of Torah which are needed and necessary and practical to combating each exile. So the four levels known of the Torah are what's called Pshat, Remez, Drash, Sod. To explain, Pshat is the simple meaning of the Torah, the simple verses of the Torah, okay? That's Pshat. Remez is like the hints hidden behind the Torah. If it's hinted to in the first letters of words, spelling out another word, or the last letters, or gematrias, numerical values, that's Remez. Drash is where you have to now expound things which are not written there explicitly, and they're hinted to and hidden, 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 and you have to expose them. It's like, a, like, like, like an FBI... CIA type of investigative work to find on a Torah level. And Sod is the level of the Kabbalah. Now, each of the exiles, the level of Torah study necessary for that exile was pertaining at that time. So in the Egyptian exile, Moshe Rabbeinu came and he revealed, all. obviously Moshe Rabbeinu had all levels of the Torah. But what was enough to free the Jews was the pshat, the level, the first level of the Torah that was so strong enough, it contained within it, the pshat, the simple meaning of the Torah, that the, the exile, the feet, in other words, the, the counterattack of the influence of the exile of Egypt, the pshat of the Torah that they received at Har Sinai. Again, at Har Sinai, the Jews received the whole Torah. But the main emphasis at the time 
was the re revealed re re the revealed le le level of the Torah. That's why you don't see so much Kabbalah mentioned and mysticism at the time of Moshe Rabbeinu. It was there, but all in a very hidden, 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 hidden level. What was functioning and powerful for the Jews at the most was the Pshat level. That was such a feedback of energy that was that was that was enough already to help the Jews stand on their feet and to have that recognition. They were holding at such a high level, in other words, the Jews, even though they were in the, in the they went to Egyptian exile, there was such a high level that the Pshat of the Torah was enough to give them the energy to stand up and to fight the, the challenges of the Yetzara and to be a Jew. Okay? Then Bavel Nebuchadnezzar, which is confusion. So deeper levels of the Torah were needed. That's the idea of Remez. The hints, okay, and and then you have drush that that was for the the Greeks, where also they were trying to challenge the Jews. So a deeper level of the Torah was needed, even though it was there, and even though the the scholars had access to these deeper levels of of remez and drush, but on a national level, that's the level of Torah that was needed to survive. So in the Babylonian exile, the remez was what was needed. Pshat was no longer enough. Remez was needed to be enhanced on a revealed level, the hints in the Torah, to give the Jews standing through the Babylonian exile. And then through the Greeks in the second temple, the Drash, the Midrashim, was the main key to give life and vigor to the Jew to stand up and to exist. And finally, in this final exile, which is when Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai finally revealed the Zohar, okay, and the Arizal came over a thousand years later, uh, 1500 years later, came and revealed the secrets of the Kabbalah at a high level. And until then, Kabbalah was kept very hidden and secret. It became open revealed. And this far, fourth exile of Romi, where the pain of exile, the darkness is so hard that you need to delve into a deeper level of Torah. But now look to get today, after the Zohar, after the Arizal, after all the Kabbalah and everything, all mysticism, the Jews are still lost. Now we're lost big time. We've actually fallen off. Like Rabbi Nachman says, a Jew has to walk on a very narrow bridge. And Rav Nussin writes in his letters, and there are many, many Jews who have already fallen off the narrow bridge. <laughs> They're already off the narrow bridge. So what to do? The Kabbalah is not enough to sustain such people. Proof is that we've fallen off. On a national level, the majority of the Jews are off the path. And even those who are religious... They find that the Judaism is very dry, very stale, very dead. And they look elsewhere, God forbid, for enthusiasm and life outside of the Torah. If it's movies, if it's Netflix, if it's Hollywood, if it's who knows what, okay? What's going on then? What's our sustenance? What's our chance in holding on this final stretch of the exile before Mashiach comes, where it's really, really painful? It's really the birth pangs of Mashiach. This, believe it or not, requires the fifth level of the Torah. The fifth level, we went into this in previous classes, it's called the Keter. The Keter in the Kabbalah hides behind it what's called the infinite light. In other words, nothing less than a high exposure of Hashem's light itself is what's needed to get people on their feet today. People are looking for light. Oh, Aleph Vav Resh, O, has the same numerical value as infinite light. Ein Sof, Aleph Yud Nun, Samech Vav Pe, is the same gematra as Or 207. Unbelievable, okay? So this is what people are looking for now. People are, are drained, they're dead, they're tired. Give them the Torah, but they're just in, like in dead mode, in pilot mode. There's no vigor. Something is more is needed. We need the infinite light to shine. Keter. This is where Chassidut comes in, and in particular, Rabbi Nachman's teachings. Rabbi Nachman said about himself, Ani ish pele venishmati pele gadol. I am a man of pele, of wonder, this word pele, and my soul is even a greater wonder. The word pele, Rav Moshe Cordovero in his book, Pardes Rimonim, and the chapter called Erkei Achinuim, Chapter 23, we goes through an alphabetical order listing of terms in the Torah based on alphabetical order and their deeper meaning. Under the word pele, which means something which is astonishing, something which is wondrous, he says this is a reference to the keter. Because the keter, which translates as the crown, 
hides within it that which is beyond grasp. In Sod, you had some grasp. In Pardes, right? Pshat, Rem is Drash, Sod. There's some grasp that we can grab, even though the Torah is infinite. But those levels of the Torah we have access to, even though they themselves they never end. But there's accessible levels that I can internalize and use. But the Pele, the Keter, is way beyond beyond their grasp. It's a light that comes and goes. In the terminology of the Zohar, it's called Mate, Bela Mate. You're in and out. You reach and not reach. You're connected and not connected. It's such an intense light that you can't have it 24-7 or else you'll disintegrate. You just disappear. It has to come in a flashing mode and you live off of the experience afterwards. What's called in the Kabbalah, Rishimu, the impression left inside of you. This is the fifth level of the Torah, the highest level. Rabbi Nachman said about himself that he is a Pele. His work is to shine into people the level of the Keter. Now watch this. Keter is the same letters as Karet. Karet, which we said earlier, excision. Kaf, Resh, Tav is the same letters as Keter. Meaning, the only hope, the only avenue of light for Jews who have fallen off totally and have transgressed the transgressions which are punishable by Karet, excision, whether it's Karet de Yome, they, they die young, or they lose their children, they leave this world with no, no offspring, or they live a full life here and then they're cut off in the world to come. There is a level of Torah, of light of Torah, that can give them hope and only that level and nothing less. That's the level of the Keter. The same Atva Dedein Ke Atva Dedein. These letters are the same letters as here to indicate this connection. That only the level of the Keter can help such a person. That's why Rabbi Nachman teaches in Lesson 30, when a person is very, very spiritually sick, like a person who's very, very sick physically, he doesn't go to the regular GP, general practitioner, or doctor. He goes to the specialist. If you're very sick, you go to the best doctors. So too spiritually. If a person is very, very, very spiritually sick, that all levels of the pardes cannot help him anymore. He's transgressed the pshat, the remes, the drash, and the sod. He's beyond all that. So his only hope at that point is the level of the keter. The Torah of the Keter is what can save him from karet, from excision. This is why, towards the end now, we're very, very close to the end, the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov came into the world, teachings of, of Hasidut, of Rabbi Nachman's teachings, where he said about himself, my fire will burn, will flicker, my flame will flicker until Mashiach comes. His light of his teachings will shine until the coming of Mashiach, meaning that this is where you can find hope for everybody. In all the lost cases where all the rabbis and all the tzaddikim gave up on people, especially in this generation, where the majority of rabbis have given up on them, we can only, we can only take care of our flock. We can't take care of the people from the outside or so far. We can give them some hope, but we can't promise them, you know, that it's going to be fixed. There are tzaddikim at a higher level, the level of the keter. Rabbi Nachman is one of them. I'm so sorry to be open, but I'm telling the truth. He said about himself, Ani ish pele. I am a man of the wonder of the Keter and my Neshama, which it means after his passing, where you have the, the, the remnant of Rabbi Nachman is his grave, his Neshama, found in his teachings, found by his grave, is even a greater Pele, meaning he can help even greater. It's a theory. It's a funny theory, which was, <laughs> I have to say this, was brought down in Star Wars, if you remember. Obi-Wan Kenobi, I'm sorry to bring this up, but it's just so funny. That he told Darth Vader, if you strike me down, I will become even more invincible and more powerful than you can imagine. That is a Torah idea. Tzadikim b'mitatam, kruim chayim. I will translate soon. Gdolim tzadikim b'mitatam, yoter mi b'chayihem. Tzadikim are greater after their passing, more than when they are alive. That's the whole idea of going to daven by graves of tzadikim, by the way, because they have unlimited power at that point. And this is our main hope. Rav Nosson writes on the Kutel Achot, our hope is now we have to go to the best. We have to reach the maximum. We need tzaddikim who are holding nothing less than the level of keter to save us from the karet, the punishments of karet that left and right people are accustomed to doing, whether knowingly, unknowingly. So this is our hope. It's, it's crazy that we're in a situation, again, where secular Judaism is the, is the, is the majority, the majority in the world. Majority of Jews in the world are not connected at all. So what's 
What level of Torah can wake them up? Only the highest level. And this highest level was laying in wait, in wait, until these few hundred years before Mashiach's coming to be revealed. And now, more than any other time is it needed, where the Jewish people are so low, like Rabbi Nachman says, everything has a beginning and an end. So too, the Jewish nation also has a beginning and an end. And we are now, Rabbi Nachman said this over 200 years ago in 1808, 1807, we are now at the end of the Jewish people. And when the Jewish nation is at the end, at that point, they are very, very, very far from Hashem. So our hope now, and all the crazy things happening in the world, the Holocaust, which was such a blow, and what's happening recently, that we're all like shocked, all so unbelievably shocked, okay? Our main hope right now is the Keter. We should be Zochem to have the light of the Keter and access it. And we open up, we're biased, of course, but we're saying it because Rabbi Nachman said it. We use Rabbi Nachman and his teachings. They have the Keter, the light of Keter found within them. Bezat Hashem. Thank you for joining. And please, please, because of the severity of the situation in the world, if you felt this class has helped you, please, please share it on your status. Thank you so much and be well. And you can always contact me by WhatsApp or email if you have any questions on this class. Thank you for joining. Shalom, shalom.